This year's panel is about scaling, scaling my SDL up or out. And I'm your moderator, I'm Vice President of Community Relations, still technically I am a MySQL employee, soon I will be one of Sun. And I'm also MySQL ambassador to Sun. And I have a number of chairs here, seven chairs. I will be calling up a number of people here to the rules of this year is it's not a battle, it's a very friendly conversation. The first part, the panelists get up on stage. The second part, we chart out the current stages of the panelists. We put the coordinates on the map, what's their size, what's their current usage of my area, and then the friendly, friendly chat begins. <laughs> and uh, I have a particular order in which I bring these guys up on stage. So I ordered them by Alexa ranking. <laughs> we take those with the lowest ranking first and, and um, we have two very low ranking websites that we send in here today. One is myscale.com. <laughs> the, the other one is sun.com. <laughs> And then uh, we get the, the pros after that. So the two first guys, uh, I will treat them in two different ways. One is that they're amateurs at, at uh, scaling websites since the Alexa ranking is so low. But they do soar those who are higher up in the hierarchy of Alexa. So they are amateurs and commentators. And then the five pros, those are the ones giving the real answers. So first in the row, we have Monty. Monty Taylor from my SPF. <laughs> so, are you the one known as the other Monty? No, I'm the first Monty. <laughs> the other Monty is the other Monty. Are you the full Monty? <laughs> I am definitely the full Monty. <laughs> but that's for later in the talk. <laughs> okay, that was uh, panelist number 1317. <laughs> we will now go for panelist number 905, and that's Matt Ingenbrock from Sun. <laughs> so we heard something here going back to royalty in, in England. I suppose your, your name has, has a connection to this. What's the name, what's the explanation of your last name? Well, so I'm, I'm definitely not a language expert, having grown up in the U.S. and mainly uh, <laughs> <laughs> English. Uh, however, uh, the I-N-G-N portion of my last name, I understand that in Swedish means nothing or none. <laughs> 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 the T-H-R-N portion in German means kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I really have no kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> so now we go to the guys who probably have a kingdom on the web. So we're taking them up with the first guy being John Bolsbom, representing Flickr. <laughs> so you're number 39. How does it feel to be the first pro on this panel? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I see a slight mismatch between the statement and, and, and the facial expression. <laughs> okay, the following guy, Bart Hunt. Masraki, Frank Mash, representing Potolo. <laughs> you have your lucky number in your Alexa ranking, I see. Yeah, it is very lucky. <laughs> okay, we are getting closer. Now we have Domas Mitutsas, Alexa ranking number nine, representing Wikipedia. <laughs> representing something else. Uh, some database company who made free product continues on our website. <laughs> Great, thank you. Now, Jeff Roth's child, Alexa ranking number six, representing Facebook. <laughs> Do you have anything smart to comment? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> And for our final panelist, we are now at number two, Paul Tuckfield, representing YouTube. <laughs> so Paul, I'm going to say the same things as he said last year when he 
you had your email. Uh, that was a lot. It took four years to say that. So. <laughs> okay. So what will happen now is that we, we want to name the coordinates. I have a set of questions here in my pocket. And uh, I will now hand off my screen to Colin. So I won't be having these rotating keynote slides any longer. He will do some plugging. And plugging is a new term which means panel logging. So <laughs> it's sort of a one-man IRC channel <laughs> writing down what these guys say here in order to uh, re record what's happening. So do we have the new slide coming up here? Yes, uh, the coordinates uh, I want to nail down here is, is related to what kind of job these guys are doing. We just heard the Alexa ranking, and that says something about the size of, of the property that these guys are representing. Um, we do need some other coordinates as well, and, the fir and, and I will ask these coordinates uh, one at a time, and then we'll go for the next question and ask for all of these, these guys to have the numbers. So the first number I'm, I'm interested in is the number of MySQL database servers. And now the amateurs will answer for their web properties. Uh, how many servers are there running MySQL at the uh, we, we have uh, one master and three slaves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sun? Uh, for the Sun.com associated properties, there is uh, uh, there are two that are clustered, and then two individuals pass that so it's four. Okay. <laughs> and we always see a jump now coming to a bigger. <laughs> uh, I was wondering how to answer this uh, because we're in the midst of bringing up the second data center. Um, so I can't technically say they're in production yet, but so it'd be 166 uh, is what service we got on right now as far as the databases. Okay. What's the log? 140 databases on 37 instances. Now, what about Wikipedia? 20. <laughs> 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 so, be specific. There's, there's, there's a disruption oh, in the curve here. Well, actually, we run some of our SQL on some of Apache servers called the Count of Point Data Review Boxes. So there are like seven, like, a bunch of additional ones, but those are the Count of Okay. And what about Facebook? About 30,000 databases. <laughs> <laughs> but we only have about 1,800 uh, database servers. And that's including uh, full replication, so 900 you know, unique database server instances. Mm -hmm. Can we get up the screens now so that we get the numbers uh, to be seen for the audience? What about YouTube? I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that if I was uh, hosting a panel, I would ask how many disk drives. Uh, how many disk drives do you have? <laughs> yes, I Shared them among Java.sun.com and 
Oh, it's letters that are ordered and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um technically zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just lost a great DBA, um, David Mattershall, and uh, so we're looking for more DBAs. How about that? I have to blow the whistle for recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> Dog food. You know, you, well, 
You don't use Enterprise? You don't use an Enterprise version? Yeah, what? You don't use an Enterprise version? It's not Enterprise of Flight 1. We use Enterprise 1, but we have an Enterprise version. We need to test the origin. It's an Enterprise version. We've got to eat the own RM dog food first, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to eat any dog food. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not positive I gave you the right version. And the funny story is that that used to be one of my interview questions for DBAs. It's no good anymore. Now that I'm saying it's probably, but I used to uh, love to ask that question because if they answered it out to the many digits, it was likely that they could be installed. And, else. But, uh, and so I want to ask if any of my guys are out there if I got the number right. Because if I got it wrong, then I mean, you know, I'm officially a fire <laughs>
reacting to anything? Like, never, but adding lots of spaghetti every day, always. <laughs> <laughs>
sometimes will promote us later to be a master. So number of, uh, of arrows in whoever we choose the right one for, for the right circumstance. Mm -hmm. But starting with that assumption that, of course, things are going to fail, and probably always are. In that case, what we do is uh, we have, we use like a source part, and this tool can be pretty resilient, but when our failures happen, we simply mount the snapshots, um, we mount the runs from the new sign, so we mount them to different servers and it's very hard. So uh, we, uh, we rely on uh, promoting a replica more or less, uh, rather than on uh, uh, use standard technologies and things in the past uh, as a typical Oracle pattern uh, for, for very important, uh, you, don't really want, you don't want to lose any data, it's very, very important uh, as a typical pattern to use. Um, and also if your data is a small as you move on to the sand and the table space. Um, I think for most of the people in the audience, it's probably, uh, you, you would want to be able to recover the server that you have. You'd probably better off investing in your hard drive, say, than, than two servers. Um, uh, as things go on, uh, if you try to recover that very server because it crashed or something, um, if, if what happens to us and probably a lot of other people is that if you drive, if you tune it well and you drive enough traffic through that one master, uh, we find that it, it takes a very, very long time for the recovery to actually happen. So that makes things like a sand fail over it not work too well because uh, the recovery time to recover that copy of the sand, uh, you add odds with your tuning strategy. You can tune your things and do far more updates than the other guy, right? But the recovery process is single thread and you can't roll those transactions forward as fast as you were able to get it to do while it's live. Well, then you find yourself waiting and you fail over on the sand for you know, an hour, two hours, three hours to recover. So we gravitate towards a morning slave, a front slave, but since each of our shards also in turn have many, many slaves, there can be some complexities in picking one of those slaves to be the master and finding all the right uh, bin locks to play to get them all to the same point. But that's uh, probably the only challenge there. But it's a great challenge to have and find yourself in the point we have in lots and lots of servers. So for the small guy, I would say get yourself a mirror controller uh, because I bet, the, I bet that mirror controller is going to fail a lot less uh, than the, uh, the other power supply. So taking you up on that uh, uh, advice to, to uh, the little guy here, um, you, you, uh, we asked a couple of coordinates here, and uh, do you see any, any crucial bit of scaling technology, either hardware or software, that's not mentioned in the, in the coordinates that you would, you would uh, want to bring up? Anyone? Yeah, every, so? every day is a continual fight against the random IO. <laughs> in, my, in my world, um, I mean, as far as scaling challenges is concerned, uh, no, I, was, I was thinking a specific technology like oh. a tool, uh, a piece of software, a piece of hardware that, that, that you think could, could be a benefit, or, or that that is crucial for you. In, and that was not mentioned when when I asked about platforms and, and stuff. Uh, not a specific. Uh, one critical outcome is network switch. Network switches. Yeah, I, I'd say that, you know, the philosophy you take towards the database service is quite different than, uh, than your web service. Uh, if web server fails, there's no consequence, so you use two switches, uh, you'll have single power supplies in the box, non-redundant disk storage if you have a disk at all. So in the database servers themselves, a disk failure doesn't constitute a loss of that server. So we run redundant RAID 10 in every, in every uh, uh, DB server, and we don't use SAM. Uh, we, we, you know, something we considered very early on, and, and I thought, you know, what would it be like to find the scalability limits of your SAM? And decided I really didn't want to find out. So we kept everything neatly partitioned with eight, eight small form factor, two and a half inch SAS drives per uh, database server and they scale independently and they fail independently, which is more, more important. So what about our common data? Do you have anything you wish to plug when it comes to software or hardware? Well, you know, I, I haven't heard anybody mention that they're using MySQL cluster, which makes me very sad, but <laughs> um, other than that, I think. So, well, one, one question, I guess, on the technologies front, because this is something I've seen with kind of a common scaling pattern. It sounds like it's here as well, in that there are many more instances per system so usually that's where we tend to use some kind of resource control or virtualization to kind of assist with making sure that we do that in a fairly same way rather than just let the processes have that. Is anyone doing that kind of thing in their site today? No. One thing I'll 
like like to say is that if you are using like Sun hardware, we have found like Ultraspot T1 Niagara One chip makes excellent masters. Um, Niagara Ultraspot T2 Niagara Two chip makes excellent slaves. So um, because it's one is extremely fast in single threaded environment, one is very excellent in multi threaded environment. And I believe Sun has um, an, a, a Spark M series that they have developed with Fujitsu that makes that can do both. If, so if you have like a slave that must stay up and must serve a lot of uh, production queries, so um, Fujitsu series with, that Sun has developed with them makes for excellent hardware. And then so one thing I would like to say about SAN is that um, for us there wouldn't have been any way to manage all the infrastructure with one DBA had we not invested in SAN because uh, what we did, one of the wiser decisions that were made that they invested in uh, financial great strength SAN and it had kept us from not worrying about having to, to raise fives all the time. So, anybody, is anybody else? I mean, is anybody using uh, server virtualization to, to manage, or is, is it all individual machines? Ours are all individual. Uh, we are investing in very like Ultra Spark T2 Niagara two chip. We have resource controls like processor sets. No, our, our approach is different. What we are trying to do is um, so it has 64 hardware execution threads, but our databases are like you know, multiple hundred. So what we do is we buy the box and we allocate the maximum RAM we can put in to just one instance so we can serve most of our work in the other side. So in other words, we allocate based on memory or based on CPUs. CPU doesn't help. Most of our CPUs sit and wait on disk. I guess the case, the reason I brought that one up on is I had seen a couple cases where um, you might put many instances on a system but because of the kind of roll off on scaling across CPUs, you, you would try to constrain them so that you don't have multiple threads getting in each other's way. So with one customer, I know we've, uh, we've done some of that where we'll, we'll just kind of, based on their workload, determine what the, uh, determine where that roll off point is. And then when we set up the instances, they, can, they may be, like in the case of Facebook, many instances running on a given piece of hardware, but that way, you know, if you've got lots of strands of execution, you can make sure it won't trip over itself. So we run one database instance. We run a single database instance per box, but with multiple databases on the box, so multiple schemes. We okay. never run one instance. Yeah. Except for a new ETL cluster or something, where we will run multiple instances, and that, that, that is a system which has a very specific workload. But uh, in general, for production here, it's one instance per box. I'd like now to move to uh, a different type of question, uh, starting off with an innocent uh, question about how worried you are about your electricity bill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not at all. I don't know. Well, quite a bit. Okay, the, the, the limitation on uh, data center scalability isn't square footage, it's power. So the more power you're using, the sooner you have to build another data center. So we can make it simple. It, it, it's first and foremost when we're looking at uh, server hardware, but the power density uh, of the print of it. So that, does that mean that in the case of YouTube, electricity is cheaper or, or that you somehow have a... Uh, uh, no, I, I think it's, it's very difficult. I find it difficult to differentiate, uh, you know, to, to really make a decision that's going to uh, really save you money, right? Like, uh, I mean, because I'm ignorant or I'm smart, but it's... Uh, it's partly you know, well funded, but it's partly also that uh, you know you're talking about a two or three year proposition. I think for the payoff of the power savings if you can hopefully get buying one thing uh, versus the other, and that's a whole different problem because you know whatever package you get, you know you might not get the same resources that you're trying to buy that could be one more power because the power supply is inefficient or something. You know, so I mean, uh, but I think that, you know the trade off, uh, the payoff point is is out there in the past Moore's law or something. Right? So more the law or as it is 18 months out, are you going to save that money in 18 months or are you going to save it uh, six months or are you going to upgrade that server? And, you know, so, I mean, unfortunately, it starts to seem a lot like, uh, you know, the auto industry, you know. So, so what yeah. about the, the periodic nature of, 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 of usage? We have lots of spikes, lots of rising periods, and we somehow power down uh, when, when there's less demand for the website. 
Well, well, we certainly don't, but I, I mean, I think that's going to take, that seems to me would take a lot more integration by the manufacturers of the, of the hardware uh, or some sort of like cloud computing where people are using more, uh, uh, you know, you, you're more a customer like you are to the power company, you'll generate your own power. Somebody else is virtualizing and hosting your services, well, then maybe that person can uh, shift loads around just like the power company does with their uh, delivery of power and they try to keep that steady state overnight. And, charge less at night or whatever, but uh, not for us as an individual. Maybe we'll get there at some point. It seems like you know, Google themselves is trying very hard to do those sorts of things. Me personally, as the guy responsible for making YouTube faster, no, I'm not. Uh, but um, I think it also probably requires a lot of work from people like you know Intel and the people who make the, the motherboards to, to, to make the server capable of that kind of line adjustment. And then lastly, the power supply makers themselves. Well, I would say one thing that um, Maybe that's why you know, uh, Google doesn't have the power issue because I know that our data center is been in power. Google has to prove it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, we got very lucky that uh, when we moved from PHP to Java, we found that we were able to cut our application servers by half. And then uh, Sun has done amazing work, and I don't want to keep plugging Sun here, but that's what we use. So uh, all the like full threads technology really keeps your boss. Uh, yeah, this is a mind you all try very hard. I don't know why you can talk about We try very hard. Just as the best we possibly can. And virtualization, I think, I mean, I don't have hard experience really trying to tune something on a virtual platform, but to me it just makes it that much harder. Obviously, that you're trying to tune, right? So it may work for some people, but if you tune that thing just as the best you possibly can, then you are saving the most power. Well, so yeah. it's just, just another thing that you're measuring it correctly. If you're counting how many servers you have, you're wasting a lot of power, aren't you? You know, if you if you count how many disk drives you're getting, if you count, you know, how many how much memory you're getting, how many QPS you're getting for the dollar, you know, and, and you wind up with less of all those components, right? Then uh, you're using less power. I, I agree, but you also have a situation where almost all of your applications span lots of systems. There are many other cases where uh, you know, we have some small sites that it may make sense to combine. So yeah, I'm sure the servers are going the way that, and it reminds me of like, you know, economics is what's driving all this, and there's a, you know, like a, it's not a perfect economic proposition because it's just like, you know, you look at the automobile when it was introduced, there were plenty of great trains and, you know, plenty of ways to get around were much more efficient, but they were large scale sort of services, right? I don't know what happened, we do it in the United States now, and you know, the entire country is transformed to support the automobile, and everybody would kind of regret it in some ways. But the economics actually made that happen, so you know, I think uh, economics might be driving us in the direction of these servers too. Uh, where you wanted you know, lots, of, lots of commodity servers when you could have had, if you started the first principles of trying to design the most efficient, large scale installation, you might not have to put a switching power supply strapped to every single district. The major problem with greenwashing overall is that if you simply turn off all the website, maybe they will spend less time turning their home computers off. And it's like it's, it's, you, you never come up with like a, the conclusion that, okay, this is some have to turn power off here. It's like there are so many side issues that you could do to, to, to change that overall kind of making plan and green. Like, well, we're just doing our job is like trying to make the system <laughs> efficient and so on. So essentially, maybe it's better to spend time with creating products instead of like really doing all that. Let's be green. I would, I would agree that the biggest wins uh, efficiency come from uh, application design and, and system tuning and making sure the, the appropriate architecture to make the best use of the resources you have. But holding all of that constant, the differences in efficiency between processor models and uh, different uh, designs for power supply and power distribution can make a difference. And when you just look at the economic payback, yes, it could take a very, very long horizon before that uh, that will come home to, to, to show that to be a, a sound economic decision. But there's all sorts of inconsequentials as well. Uh, again, the data center itself is constrained by the amount of power you can support within the data center. So you have these step functions when you move into another data center. You have simply how close to capacity in terms of the key capacity you running a given facility, well, that goes a long way to determining the error of margin you have for when there happens to be a problem at the facility if the chiller fails. So there's lots of benefit that uh, derives from 
running with less power. And on top of that, it's simply the uh, civic responsibility of using as little energy as you can for delivering a certain quality of service. And we feel that that's really in our best interest to, uh, to pursue that path. So we have invested in service that we believe is by, uh, you know, even though we pay a premium, they, they do offer uh, better, uh, better uh, energy efficiency. Thank you. So uh, we now are, are getting close to the end of this, and I would like to have some wisdom uh, compressed, very compressed wisdom from each one of you. If you have 20 seconds to say something uh, in the way of a recommendation for for the, the typical person in the audience whose lecture ranking is not too, um, either a lesson learned from, from earlier on or, or uh, something that is interesting for your particular point in time right now. Let's start from, from the highest lecture ranking. So, Paul. 20 seconds? Yep. Uh, how much left? Five, five. <laughs> the answer to everything is notification. Just got to rephrase the question. <laughs> I'd say the answer to everything is uh, memory. The, the source of all problems are, of course, your developers. If you don't. <laughs> I used to, uh, to prepare a graph that showed the uh, cost, of, cost of execution of, uh, of, of a page uh, relative to the number of, of developers on the team, and it's almost a straight line. So, <laughs> you hire them, they write code, it takes more hardware to run the, uh, to the service than so ever did, but presumably the service is exactly exactly your kind of service. Thomas is with them. Our biggest architectural change was then done like in you know, like 10 minutes or like maybe an hour. So like you shouldn't be afraid to err, just make something out. This temporary change will live for like next time years. <laughs> Frank? I would say, I would have to say architect properly and start and even your most optimized schemas may not be optimized because what you have to look into is what's the cost of serving data, not just how quickly this uh, query performs. And you can get a lot more by looking into that, like optimizing your I.O not just optimizing the um, uh, The last sort of stole mine. Um, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, if you don't know when you're going to fail, then you will. All right. Um, I would say you need to consider a lot of these things as part of your product lifecycle uh, or whatever lifecycle you have. And you're just going to do performance fitting. Um, scaling is inherently iterative, so you've got to take that into consideration. And for the full amount the answer? Yeah, I, I'd say that the, the biggest thing that, that I see with various people is to not, uh, one of the things you see that all these guys have done successfully is they haven't abdicated um, knowledge of exactly what's going on in their system. So they haven't just said, oh, I'm going to let this framework take care of something for me. You, you've got to know what's happening on all of the pieces of your, of your thing and not, the, the more you know about that, the better you can make your system. Um, and that's that's really that's really what you're what you're doing most of the time. And so yeah. Okay. Thank you, dear panelists. That was an excellent and interesting discussion.